are quite characteristic. As ever, I'm going to read this nice and slow. Uh, very interesting passage and very uh, uh, jargon filled. So it's not easy to, to read, which is the fun part of it. Fine. When researchers at Emory University in Atlanta trained mice to fear the smell of almonds or almonds, they found to their consternation and they, they packed it with electric shocks with their consternation that both the children and grandchildren of these mice were spontaneously afraid of the same smell. Very interesting. This is not supposed to happen. Generations of school children have been taught that the inheritance of acquired characteristics is impossible. A mouse should not be born with something its parents have learned during their lifetimes. Any more than a mouse loses its tail in an accident should give birth to tailless mice. Oh, brilliant. The analogy is brilliant. It's basically saying, uh, the, the whole idea of evolution or, 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 or inheriting something or, or going through some characteristics, he, 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 the whatever message is going from generation to generation, stimulus-led thing, what a parent has learnt, that stimulus should not be stored and transferred to the next generation. An interesting idea, interesting idea. Let's read more. Modern evolutionary biology dates back to a synthesis that emerged around 1940s and 60s, which married Charles Darwin's mechanism of natural selection with Gregor Mendel's discoveries of how genes are inherited. The traditional and still dominant view is that adaptations from the human brain to the peacock's tail are fully and satisfactorily explained by natural selection and subsequent inheritance. Yet, new evidence from genomics, epigenetics and developmental biology indicate that evolution is more complex than we once assumed. So I don't know these terms. Genomics, epigenetics and developmental biology. And so lots of jargon, lots of terms. Natural selection we know, which is basically how man evolved from monkey and we came from uh, the sea and slowly became more and more complicated species with finally man the, the apex of the evolutionary chain. And, uh, what uh, uh, with with this this theory has been tied in and so uh, adaptations are fully and satisfactorily explained by natural selection and subsequent inheritance and how genes are inherited so there, there is some codified information that happens possibly over millennia and then tweaks happen in the genetic code to address of uh, environmental changes so natural selection happens one type of gene get spiked more and more another type get, is pushed out faded out and then characteristics are acquired so you cannot say uh, in a generation one particular trait gets trait gets picked up whereas the previous experiment with mice there's been a trait that has been picked up in a generation that is clearly not natural selection nor is it allied to this Gregor Mandel theory of how, how genes are inherited? Fine. So very often, uh, not very often, almost always, natural selection is a process that is not explained in any one uh, set of generations. And so from monkey came man. How, when, over many ten thousands of years. And so it's not from a monkey gave birth to a man. And whereas this seems to be suggesting something else. Okay. Let's go to the third paragraph. In his book on human nature, 1978, the evolutionary biologist Edward O. Wilson claimed that human culture is held on a genetic leash. The metaphor needs revision. Let's see what the metaphor is. Imagine a dog walker, the genes, struggling to retain control of a brawny mastiff. Human culture, the pair's trajectory, reflects the outcome of the struggle. Now imagine the same dog walker struggling with multiple dogs on leashes of varied lengths, with each dog tugging in different direction. All these tugs represent the influence of developmental factors, including epigenetics, antibodies and hormones passed on by, by parents, as well as the ecological legacies and culture they bequeath. Basically saying, natural selection and genes and that process is the starting point. That's what the dog walker has. And then there, is, there are several struggles. So some cultural some or, or the, the, the culture the ecological culture not the culture that we know of antibodies and hormones and, and all of these factors from through the different the dogs pushing and pulling on their own the path the man and the dog take are going to be a function of where the the dog walker wants to go and how the dogs pull him how the genes govern and how 
the inherited structures from the genes from whatever the the, the different strands the dogs take how they affect the gene itself historically traditionally the traditional view was the the inherited ideas are genetic based on natural selection we have never thought that some inherited characteristic could happen over a generation so this is something new when well, let's read let's read this more further down the received wisdom is that parental experiences can't affect the characters of their offspring yes a very interesting point it says that look if if i am i don't uh, i get worried when i see uh, mathematical questions because my sixth standard teacher used to thwack me every time i made a mistake i would expect my son to be not worried about math when this kind of cultural psychological uh, conditioning that's happening because of an external stimulus that can't possibly get transferred to the offspring whereas the mouse experiment is saying something dramatically different and therefore on natural selection on genetic inheritance set a bunch of new ideas let's see them except they do that is characters are affected the way the genes are expressed to produce an organism's phenotype the actual characteristics it ends up with is affected by chemicals that attach to them wonderful everything from diet to air pollution to parental behavior can influence the addition or removal of these chemical marks so when my when my sixth standard teacher thwacks me there is a there is a chemical that links me with a phobia to math and then that goes and attaches itself to the genes La- hopefully they should get weeded out when i'm having children otherwise whatever weakness i have they will inherit i don't want that fine so let's see this further uh, the additional removal of these chemical marks which switches genes on or off usually these so called epigenetic attachments are removed during the production of sperm and egg cells brilliant epigenetic is not inherited but some addition additional chemical thing due to stimulus are removed during the production yeah that's natural that's to be understandable my phobias should not be inherited my the species phobias can be but mine should not be but it turns out that some escape the resetting process and are passed on to the next generation along with the genes that's why this epigenetic addition is sitting on top of the gen- gene pool this is known as epigenetic inheritance and more and more studies are confirming that it really happens i'm not really happy with this why i'm not really happy with this from, from a social point of view uh, the poor inherit a set of things because of social conditioning the way they think their minds uh, they struggle with an open canvas they don't see the world the way the middle class or the rich see it would be a shame if their ch- children inherited not just their wealth but also their world view it looks like that's also happening so in which case we need to put more fight to make sure that our poor are not continue to be poor let's return to the almond fearing mice the inheritance of an epigenetic mark transmitted in the sperm is what led the mice's offspring to acquire an inherited fear so the the fear creates a chemical that goes and attaches itself to the genes which should get weeded off but it some of them don't this is one of those epigenetic attachment that does not get weeded off with when the sperm and egg cells are created and therefore it is transmitted epigenetics is only part of the story through culture and society humans and other animals inherit knowledge and skills skills acquired by their parents all this complexity points to an evolutionary process in which genomes over over hundreds or to thousands of generations epigenetic modi- modification and inherited cultural factors over several perhaps tens or hundreds of generation and parental effects over single generation time spans collectively inform how organisms adapt parental influence i can understand but parental genetic markers that's a little unusual so it's 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 the the the, the genomes which are like long term which is where which which explains natural selection and, evol- and evolution epigenetic modifications which is more short term parental effects these extra genetic kinds of inheritance give organisms the flexibility to make rapid adjustments to environmental challenges dragging genetic change in their wake much like a rowdy pack of dogs he's saying the long term thing the medium term thing and the short term thing due to different several factors historically we were thinking only the long term things matter but these also matter and the mouse experiment has been a pivotal turning point in 
probably the scientific community accepting that something like this can happen it's one of those surprising results we do do not expect the children and grandchildren to inherit the fear of amens the fact that going near amens is given the electric shock has not just had an impact in this but has also had a chemical impact attaching to the gene which refuses to go away as well right wonderful let's get the complex the passage is complex lots of jargon lots of names lots of studies and some, some, some many different strands of ideas thrown together hopefully the questions will not be that difficult maybe they will be thrown as well let's see the passage uses the metaphor of a dog walker to argue that evolutionary adaptation is most comprehensively understood as being determined by genetic epigenetic developmental factors and ecological legacies when let's go to this the dog walker analogy genes are there they're definitely genetic and so it still says there's a dominant view and so genes are the dominant they play the genetic transformation is a dominant view no doubt about it right so gene genetics has to be there in the answer that is there that's a given that's the dog walker he's struggling with so many dogs and all that but the dog walker is clue cook is crucial all these tucks present the influence of developmental factors including epigenetics antibodies and hormones and ecological legacies and culture so definitely looking for genetics i'm also looking for epigenetic we're also looking for ecological legacies into so, genetic epigenetic developmental factors ecological legacies i think a looks very juicy uh, b is socio cultural there's no talk of this when human when, when cultural is talking of it's about the the, the the genomic culture not not what we see is drama and play and theater it's not being dwelled upon this one genetic extra genetic there's no extra genetic the term used here is epigenetic this also can be ruled out extra genetic genetic epigenetic no choice a uh, interestingly this question is not that difficult because all of these phrases are mentioned here the genes developmental factors epigenetics ecological legacies they are just explicitly stated so choice a it is which of the following options best describes the author's argument darwin's theory of natural selection cannot fully explain evolution true on top of this natural selection there's a there's a layer of genetic inheritance that this next guy has added but that is the dominant view but sitting on top of that is the idea that epigenetics and developmental factors and cultural factors are all playing a role right so uh, several ideas are being done so natural selection is not does not fully that is true maybe something else would be better than this and mental theory of inheritance is unfairly underestimated in explaining evolution no it's not necessary he's saying uh, men, natural selection and gregor mendel this forms the dominant view we're not underestimating we've accepted it that's the mainstream so this is not right practically saying darwin and mendel wrote the book effectively on how we viewed this what you are seeing now is another layer to it so another right answer darwin's and mendel's theories together best explain evolution this is the dominant view but that is not the author's argument author is saying okay this is the dominant view they form the bedrock on top of it several nuances have now been observed and proven so we need to take that on board so this is not the author's argument wilson's theory of evolution is scientifically superior to either darwin's or mendel's no darwin is the god in this darwin wrote natural selection the idea and still that is the mainstream that is the natural thing they are now saying beyond that there could be two other things and so there's not there's not there's no talk of something being superior or inferior to anything else and choice a it is the emory university experiment with mice points to the inheritance of acquired characteristics yes of course a fear of amens is an acquired characteristic psychological markers possibly i have to think about this but i don't know whether it's explicitly mentioned this is clear personality traits no we're talking about sudden fear sudden phobia some acquired characteristic not whether you have a flair for public speaking acquired parental fears no acquired characteristics is a better expression than acquired parental fears is not it's not narrowing the discussion down to fears the, due to some stimulus 
the parent is acquiring a characteristic that is laid down so i'm going to read this passage again that bit alone they found to their consternation spontaneously afraid of the same smell smell of almonds have been taught that inheritance of acquired characteristics is impossible an acquired characteristics inheritance clear the phrase is being used inheritance of acquired characteristics choice a which is the following if found to be true would negate the main message of the passage a study indicating the primacy of ecological impact on human adaptation i don't know ecological impact i don't know this is being even, even referred to not relevant at least let us let us come back to this a study highlighting the criticality of epigenetic inheritance to evolution uh, that would that would reinforce the author's message the author is saying look it's not just natural selection and genetic inheritance there's epigenetic factors also play a role so if a study highlighting this then would reinforce that would reinforce this not negate a study affirming the sole influence of natural selection and inheritance to evolution this is our answer the author's entire passage is natural selection and inheritance darwin and mendel they have given us almost everything we have not 90% of what we need to do we thought it was 100% hey tell you what there's something more than that we are going to discuss that so there's a study and confirming that this is a sole influence then that will negate the main message of the passage the main message is so oh, this is darwin and mendel are brilliant but tell you what new research is saying there's something else also so c would negate that a study affirming the influence of socio cultural markers on evolutionary processes this will either reinforce that something else is there or, 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 or add some more meat to the idea that there is something yet to be still discovered but it's not going to negate what is there choice c it is and wonderful wonderful passage fairly difficult one as well